Uh, so okay, uh, I'm going to start. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, today, uh, me, Yuto Hayamizu, and my colleague, uh, Ryoji Kawamichi, is uh, presenting. And in this talk, we are going to cover the theoretical fundamentals of query optimization and implementation of uh, implementation basics of Postgres optimizer. So first, uh, let's start with looking back the history of database system. Before relational database system, or before relational data model, querying was physical activity. Uh, physical means uh, you have to know uh, where data is stored, how data can be retrieved, and uh, you have to navigate yourself by programming. But uh, after relational data model, uh, so the invention of relational data model has changed the situation and um, relational models separate the uh, logical data view and the physical data organization and curing become logical activity. So physical aspects of database system uh, is black boxed and what users have to do is just declare uh, what users want. So in order to build the working relational database system, um, so this gap filling technology is the key enabler and that's the query optimization. So uh, imagine if we have perfect query optimizer. So if query optimizer perfectly fills the gap between logical and physical, uh, we do not have to care about physical behavior of database system anymore. So that means uh, we do not ha uh, need explain anymore, at least for users. But uh, uh, reality is stuck, and uh, as everybody here understands, um, query optimizer is not perfect, and sometimes it's far from perfect. So query optimization is inherently difficult problem. So theoretically difficult to perfectly solve this problem, and it's also uh, practically difficult to implement. So um, in, relation, in relational database systems, although a large part of physical aspects is black boxed, but still users need to take care of physical behavior of database system. So this is why uh, explain is so much explained all around the world. But uh, why not we go further? Uh, explain is, uh, with explain, we can see only the final output of the optimizer. But uh, if you understand query optimization more deeply, uh, it enables you to control uh, more better your database system. So in this talk, uh, we are going to present the theoretical fundamentals of query optimization and also cover the uh, implementation basics of Postgres, uh, and especially focusing on the basic scan and join optimization. And so uh, we also present the experimental uh, results uh, of, with, of Postgres optimizer with TPCH benchmark. Okay, so let's start with theory of query optimization. For query optimization framework, uh, there are two main categories, cost-based and rule-based. So cost-based optimization, uh, optimal plan is selected based on the cost estimation. And today, most modern database optimizers are cost-based. Uh, for rule-based optimization, query plan is selected based on heuristically ranked uh, manually made rules and Rule-based optimization is very easy to implement and easy to reproduce the same result. But it, uh, because uh, optimizer developer have to manually uh, tune the rule, it's very hard to handle a wide variety of query plans. And uh, today, the main topic is cost-based optimization. And main challenges is cost-based optimization is this three uh, problems. So the first challenge is cost modeling. Uh, so estimating how much CPU operator costs or how much I operation costs or something like that. It's a very difficult problem. And the second challenge is cardinality estimation. So uh, how much tuples 
uh, outputted by scans joins the aggregation, and the optimal strategy of query execution depends on the, uh, that size. And even for a uh, simple scanning uh, query, if there is a, a complex uh, selection condition, uh, cardinality estimation is very hard. And if uh, joins or aggregates or subqueries are involved, it's much, much more difficult problem. And the third challenge is join ordering search. Uh, when joining my multiple tables, there are uh, many possible patterns of join orderings. And uh, exhaustive search of that, that such space is known to be NP-hard, so we need much, much more <laughs> smarter way. So to solve this problem, uh, to solve these three challenges, uh, initial technology direction was established by a uh, system R optimizer. System R is a one of the uh, earliest uh, relational database implementation by IBM Laboratory, and this uh, System R paper uh, defines a standard framework of cost-based uh, cost optimization. So, of course, uh, recent query optimization technology is much, much more sophisticated than System R, but the basic technology <laughs> direction is still unchanged from System R uh, optimizer. And uh, modern optimizers are all, uh, usually mentioned as system R style. So let's look at how system R optimizer works. In system R optimizer, uh, cost of query uh, execution is calculated from the estimated page fetch count and the uh, uh, storage API call count. Uh, this is CPU cost, actually. And the four uh, page fetch count and storage API call count Statistics including uh, cardinality of each relation and the uh, number of pages in each relation, the number of distinct keys e in each index, and the number of uh, pages in each index is collected for uh, <coughs> estimation. So this is very similar to Postgres, and the fun this very fundamental framework uh, for cost modeling is still used today in, in many database systems. So this fundamental has already established about 40 years ago. And uh, so System R introduced bottom-up plan search algorithm for uh, optimizing a single table scan. Uh, just select the cheapest access path, and this uh, it's very easy. So selecting sequential scan or index scan, something like that. And for optimizing multiple uh, relation join, uh, there could be many, many uh, possibility of uh, join orderings. And uh, in order to, uh, in bottom-up uh, plan search, join ordering search starts from a uh, single relation optimization. Uh, so for each base relation, uh, optimize the, uh, pick up the cheapest plan, and then uh, find the join uh, optimal join orderings of every possible two relation joins, and then find uh, optimal join orderings of every possible three, three relation join, and iterate this process. Uh, let's look more detail with the example of uh, four relation join. At the first step, uh, cheapest plan for uh, each relation is selected. So this orange plan uh, should be cheapest one. And the next step, uh, generating possible plans for two relation join uh, with this cheapest plan. And then pick up the cheapest one for the later steps. And doing the same thing for uh, every possible combination of join, uh, two relation join, and repeating the same process. And finally, we, uh, we get the four relation join plan and uh, select the cheapest uh, plan. So this is the uh, bottom-up plan search algorithm. And this algorithm widely used in modern uh, optimizer like Postgres. And here, uh, I'd like to introduce another important optimization approach introduced by Volcano or Cascades. Volcano people introduced top-down uh, transformational plan search algorithm. So this optimization algorithm is not well known as system R optimizer, but uh, widely used in practically, uh, such as 
Microsoft SQL Server, uh, Apache Hive, or Green Plum Ochre. And another interesting point of this uh, Volcano paper is its extensibility. So Volcano is actually not query optimizer, but a query optimizer generator. So it defines the general framework of query optimization. So like GIS defines the general framework for index. So uh, Volcano is not limited to uh, optimization of relational query. And users uh, of Volcano, in this case, the optimizer developer, defines actual implementation by giving definition of logical operator and physical algebra. So in the context of relational uh, database, logical operator means the relational algebra operator, like scan or a select or a project or a join. And physical algorithm means a specific uh, scan or join method, like index scan, sequential scan, hash join, asset loop join, or something like that. So let's look at top-down uh, transformation now, such in Volcano. The such starts from initial logical plan. Logical plan means the trees consist of uh, only uh, logical operator and no physical uh, algebra. And for example, in this case, a uh, tree just says project, join, select, and no physical algebra, uh, physical algorithm, and starting from this initial uh, logical plan, alternative plans are uh, uh, generated uh, with these three types of transformation. The first transformation is the logical operator transformation. So logical operator tree is transformed into equi equivalent form. Uh, for example, uh, changing joint ordering or uh, pushing down projection. And the second uh, transformation rule is physical algorithm selection, like uh, selecting hash joins for this subtree, or uh, selecting index scan for this operator, or something like that. And the third type of transformation is sorting order enforcing. So in, for example, enforcing uh, sorting for these two, these two points, uh, then a uh, merge join algorithm can be used. Uh, in this joint operator. So in top-down search of Volcano, uh, this kind of, uh, using this uh, transformation rules, possible plan candidates are generated, uh, and Volcano applies these rules recursively to search the possible plans. Uh, and in bottom-up search, so in bottom-up search algorithm, all the results are necessary to uh, composing the final result. So it is very difficult to reduce the search space, but in top-down search, it is possible to intentionally uh, limit the search space. For example, a uh, well-known uh, well branch and bow algorithm can be used to uh, pruning the you know, optimal uh, candidates. Or uh, we can limit the search space by user-defined uh, optimization time deadline or something like that. OK, so far, uh, two major cost-based optimization style were covered, uh, system R style and uh, volcano style. So system R style is uh, bottom-up uh, optimization with cost modeling. And, uh, Volcano is a top-down transformational search with extensible uh, optimizer generation framework. <coughs> okay, so this is the end of uh, theory part, so I switch back to Ryoji. Now uh, we move on to implementation of Postgres optimizer. As mentioned before, 
Postgres optimizer is system R style, and bottom up plan search scheme is basically the same as previous slide. For cost estimation, Postgres models ex execution costs in per operation basis. Maybe most of you know these five cost parameters. And actually, there is the new parameter, parallel tuple cost, uh, in upcoming 9.6. But we want to focus on basic cases this time, so it's not covered. These parameters represent computational overhead of single operation. And the number of each operation in a query is estimated from statistics and from cost formula of each plan node types. Uh, this is cost formula. It consists of multiplication of single, single operation cost and operation count. Single operation cost, operation count. This sum. Postgres has a lot of plan node types, so it's very hard to cover all of these types. In this talk, we would like to focus on only basic cases and look into the details of cost modeling. So let me start with these two fundamental scan methods. Sequential scan is the simplest method, just scanning whole them sequentially. On the other hand, index scan selectively scans only interesting data. So execution cost of index scan is proportional to the selectivity of query. Yeah. Um, and if you select only small fraction of records, index scan is much cheaper than sequential scan. This range. But if you select large portion of data, sequential scan is more efficient. So the optimizer will choose index scan at lower selectivity and will choose sequential scan at higher selectivity. Let's move on to how cost of these scans are modeled. First, sequential scan. Cost formula of sequential scan is rather simple. Just count the number of pages fetched for IO cost, and the number of tuples for CPU, CPU tuple cost. Uh, CPU operator cost is dependent on complexity of fair clothes. The complex, complexity means the varieties of operations such as operator or function or subqueries or a combination of these operations. All the operator cost, factor, cost factors are registered in Postgres catalog, and these values are used to calculate CPU operator cost. Next, index scan. Index scan is a bit more complex than sequential scan and basically consists of these five cost components. Let's check them one by one. The first component is B plus tree search. Internal node of B plus tree is frequently accessed, so it is assumed to be always cached in buffer memory. So CPU cost of searching down B plus tree is counted not as IO cost, but as CPU operator cost. When arrived 
the diff of index. Executor scans index tuples in diff pages. <coughs> Scanning diff pages is the second cost component. Um, and it is counted as CPU index tuple cost. This can be calculated from the number of leaf pages, uh, average number of index tuples in a page, and selectivity of query. For IO cost of index leaf pages, we need to consider cache effect. For this purpose, there is a famous estimation function developed by McCutt and Roma, and Postgres uses this function. This is this is line, um, which has no no cache effect, and this is line. Um, which is affected by Macad and Roman function. Next cost component is heap table scan. If physical orderings of index tuples and heap tuples, physical order, are totally uncorrelated, this case, and the the IO pattern to heap table will be random, random access. So the cost is counted as random page cost. On the other hand, uh, if physical ordering of these pages uh, are correlated, Uh, IO pattern will be sequential. Postgres collects uh, correlation for each index column in statistics. And in cost formula, sequential page cost and random page cost is weighted by correlation factor. And the last cost component is CPU cost of scanning heap tuples. The calculation of this cost is almost the same as sequential scan, except the number of tuples is computed with index scan selectivity. Next, we cover these two join methods, hash join and nested boot join. Hash join is the most efficient join method for joining large number of records, and it usually combined <coughs> with sequential scans. On the other hand, nested group join is generally better at joining small number of records with selective scans. So it is usually combined with, with index scans or uh, small sequential scans. First, let's look into hash join. Hash join has two execution phases. The first phase is called build phase. phase. In the build phase, inner tuples are scanned and hashed into hash table, hash table buckets. So cost is the sum of inner scan cost and hashing CPU operator cost and CPU tuple cost. After build phase, the hash table is operated and pro phase starts. <coughs> In probe phase, Tuples in outer table is fetched one by one. And for each tuple, hash table lookup is executed. For estimating CPU cost of hash table lookup, the number of buckets in hash table matters. 
バケツナンバー Suppose 16 tuples are hashed into a hash table If there are two buckets in the hash table each bucket, uh, each bucket may contain four tuples Uh, eight, eight tuples, sorry, eight tuples. So in hash table lookup, four tuples are compared in average. If there are four buckets in the hash table, each bucket may contain four tuples, so two tuples are compared in average. This means if the number of buckets becomes larger, The CPU cost of hash table lookup becomes lower. In Postgres implementation, the number of buckets does not increase continuously because it is doubled according to the number of hash tuples. So, estimated cost of hash join looks like this zigzag curve. Next, nested loop join. Nested loop join loops in a scan for each, uh, each outer scan tuple like this. Tuple, loop, tuple, in a scan loop. And repeated execution of in a scan causes caching effect and may change the cost of in a scan cheaper. So Postgres distinguish the first invocation of inner scan with repeated invocation. If the number of outer tuples is one, inner scan is invoked only once, so no special consideration is needed. Cost is calculated by just summing up the cost of outer scan the cost of inner scan, CPU tuple cost, and CPU operator cost of evaluating the join conditions. If the number of outer tuples is greater than one, inner rescan cost is calculated separately. As mentioned in the slide of index scan, Postgres implements MacCut and Roman function for estimating caching effect. And this function is also used for estimating caching effect of repeated in a scan. <coughs> The number of output tuples are CPU operator cost of join conditions are easily calculated by multiplying the number of tuples from outer and inner. So far, uh, we have covered detailed cost formula of basic scan and join method. Now, let's look at how it works with TPC edge benchmark. Oh. TPH is a data warehouse benchmark and it defines schema, data generation rules, and 22 queries from simple, simple scans to complex joints and subqueries. Maybe um, many of you know DBT3 and 
PGTPCH. And there are open source implementation of TPCH. In this experiment, we used 100 gigabytes data set. This is our experimental environment. The server has two Xeon processors and 24 disks. Postgres version is 9.5. And in order to observe default behavior of Postgres, we used default cost parameter values. Um, FEM, FEM measuring cost estimation and execution time of sequential scans and hash joints only enables sequential scan and enable hash joint parameter we set to on. And parameters for other methods were disabled. And for measuring index scan and nested loop joints, only these two parameters <coughs> were set to on. And other are uh, disabled. The first result is the simple, simplest case. This is TPCH query number one. Just scan the largest line item table. For sweeping selectivity space, we modified fair close condition. In this case, we changed selectivity with selected duration of shipping date column in in line item table. This graph uh, shows estimated cost of each query plan according to the selectivity of query. As you can see, the cost of index scan is almost proportional to the selectivity and it is cheaper for small selectivity. On the other hand, the cost of sequential scan is almost consistent, uh, almost constant across all selectivity because sequential scan always scans entire table. And this graph is the execution time as you can see, Postgres is good at estimating cost, cost trend uh, of each scan method. Uh, increasing cost of index scan and flat cost of sequential scan. But there is an error for cheapest plan set cheapest plan selection. In this range, uh, index scan is estimated less expensive than it should be. This is this is our server has rich IO uh, bandwidth. This is because our server has rich I.O. bandwidth and sequential I.O. is about 100 times faster than random I.O. So tuning random page cost parameter should improve the uh, accuracy of estimation. Next. Look at join query. TPCH query number three is 
three way join query with simple aggregation. The result look, looks similar to query number one. Cost of nested loop with index scan is almost proportional to the selectivity. And cost of hash join with sequential scan is nearly flat. Again, cost trend estimation is good for each join method. But in this range, in this range, uh, nested, loop, nested loop join takes several thousand seconds. While Hash join finished in hundreds of seconds. So cost parameter calibration matters a lot. <coughs> Look at more complex queries. Query number four is a semi-join query. As you can see, execution time um, of query number four was unstable because of plan switching for nested loop join. These are three, three, and three plans. One plan, two plan, three plans. Um, Postgres optimizer thought that cost values of these three plans are continuous, but Actually, execution time was discontinuous. Discontinuous. Query 22 is anti-join query, and cost estimation were flat, flat uh, across all selectivity range. But actually, execution time changed according to selectivity. To estimate to to estimate cardinally of semi-join and anti-join actually is difficult because it needs complex statistics such as multi-column correlation and there is no general solution. Let me summarize the Postgres implementation part. In this part, we visited cost formula of some basic scan and join methods and observed how Postgres optimizer worked with TPCH benchmark queries. For simple scan or multiple table joint queries, Postgres optimizer is good at estimating overall trends of each scan and join method. The result also indicated that Postgres could choose non-optical plan without cost parameter tuning especially IO cost parameter in our case. For complex queries like semi-join or anti-join, even overall trend estimation were not accurate. This does not mean the implementation of Postgres is poor. Cost estimation of these kinds of queries are inherently difficult. So that means deep understanding of how query optimization works is critical to have a good command of your Postgres database. And okay, so I'm back again. So before concluding this talk, let's overview cutting edge technologies for further improvement of query optimization. So traditionally, query optimization has been a closed problem. Closed means, so query optimizer is required to co convert input SQL statement into optimal plan in a short time with limited knowledge of actual data and uh, with approximated cost model. So in this problem settings, it is inherently difficult to 
um, find the optimal plan for complex queries uh, employed in real world application. So as we have seen in the last uh, TPCH experiments. So recently rethinking the pro uh, problem setting itself is the active research area. So, um, so for example, not uh, limited to general statistics collection, uh, but also utilizing previous e execution history to improving cost estimation of specific queries or uh, dynamic integration of query optimization and query execution. So there's some exa uh, interesting example. So Meet query optimization. This is the um, pioneering work in integration of optimization and execution. So this method detects sub-optimality of executing uh, Query plan by collecting runtime statistics and incrementally improving cost estimation. So when running query plan is det detected as suboptimal, its execution is cancelled uh, at the middle of execution, and the query plan is modified to run faster. So there are some plan modification strategy. Like uh, the simplest one is just discarding current uh, result and start new execution. And uh, another smart strategy is modifying subtree of query plan, which is not started yet, or saving the partial, uh, partial execution result and uh, generate a new secret statement that using the partial ex execution result. Another approach of runtime plan switching is plan bucket. So in this method, uh, plan bucket, Query at the query optimization time, a set of optimal plan candidates are uh, generated for each selectivity range. For, for example, uh, for this selectivity range, P1 is the best, and for this range, P2 is the best. <laughs> and initially, the, uh, the optimal plan with initial selectivity estimation is used for execution, and runtime uh, statistics is corrected to improve uh, selectivity estimation. And when initial selectivity estimation turned out to be wrong, execution plan is switched to another plan during ex execution. So there is another uh, interesting uh, research. So this is also theoretical approach to improving plan selection accuracy. In this work, uncertainty of cost estimation is analyzed uh, for example, uh, selection uh, uh, cost estimation error in the base relation of joint tree. So it will be amplified and results in large cost uh, estimation error in entire plan. So the optimality of plan, se uh, plan selection is very sensitive to this kind of error. In this method, such an error sensitive part is analyzed, and uh, that part of plan is partially executed uh, in the optimization phase and for, uh, for improving accuracy of the estimation and reduce the uncertainty of total cost estimation error. Okay, finally, let me summarize uh, our talk. So, in this talk, we cover theoretical fundamentals of cost based optimization, including Systemal style optimization and volcano style optimization. And then we visited implementation of Postgres optimizer and uh, show some results with TPCH benchmark. And also presented the overview of some cutting edge technologies for further improvement of query optimization. Uh, that's all for our talk. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Uh, versus random. Is there a, are there any tools for pre-tuning those, like doing for a pre-scan on your hardware to adjust the planning parameters? Uh, currently, we don't have uh, such uh, tools. But uh, for another database system, maybe Oracle has something like that. And uh, maybe implementing such tool is uh, uh, 
interesting that's what possible. Very close to that question. Is there any way to dilute two? Pardon? So that's uh, very uh, difficult. Huh? Hmm? Can you repeat the question? Ah, ah, so, so is there any way to manually tune the, to reduce this error? Uh, yeah. So, and this is, uh, so practically it's very uh, difficult problem, but for uh, simpler case, um, we can set the calibration query, so very easy query to estimate the cardinality. So uh, we can, uh, we know there is no cardinality error, so error should be only cost parameter values. So making such case and uh, running some uh, calibration query, and maybe uh, you, you can manually tune that way. And uh, that method is presented in uh, ICD paper, so uh, later I can tell you. The paper. Let's say you would want to generate this graph so you can manually tune your own database. I understand you can measure the time, so how would you tell Postgres which query plan to choose so you can plot them on, on the graph? Usually Postgres will pick a query plan mm -hmm. and you're stuck with it. And you can't draw the two lines and mm -hmm. the intersection. Uh, so the question is how to draw a uh, nested loop uh, join, a hash join line separately, right? And uh, yeah, that's true in general case. So we don't have uh, very limited uh, liberty to choose the query plan. But for this kind of query, uh, by setting uh, this enable parameter, we can limit the uh, plan selection. And so this scale is very simple. We can work in this way. Uh, could you speak more loudly? But issues with Sorry? Bind variables. Bind? Oh, so sorry, I can't catch your question. Um, Maybe we can take it off. Okay, sorry. Yes. When it comes to parallel education, uh, have you tried to observe such kind of graph for parallel education and how, I mean, the model that we have used right now for parallel query fits the actual education time uh, that are observed? So your question is, uh, uh, did I try parallel execution and uh, check the cost modeling of parallel execution? Um, the answer is uh, currently no, um, but we are trying to test uh, power execution uh, performance in our laboratory. And uh, so, but power execution is uh, it's very uh, difficult to estimate the cost model. So it's not simple in this case, uh, like this case. So. Did you think about machine learning? Hmm? Machine learning stuff. Uh, so you can learn and teach optimizers. So machine learning is very selectivity. machine learning is useful uh, for improving final uh, estimation accuracy. But uh, analytical understanding of cost modeling is the fundamental of query op optimizer. So we cover the fundamental in this time. Okay, time is up. Okay, thank you so much.